This is Nitin Dahad uh, with the Times, and I'm here at the Analog Devices booth uh, at Nure uh, Embedded World in Nuremberg with Rob Oshana, who's just recently joined Analog Devices. Rob, what's your role here? Tell hello. Hi, Nitin. So I'm a Senior Vice President of the Software and Security Group at ADI. So we're in charge of all of the software development, enablement, deployment, and support for analog and digital at, at ADI. Okay, good. So um, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's an interesting role, and, and, and you did a talk here at the uh, at the conference. Uh, tell us a little bit about that and then we can then delve into some of those aspects. Sure. So my talk was on reducing complexity in technology mainly around software and the way we accomplish that is by providing the right hardware abstraction layers. So at ADI we have many hundreds, thousands of analog parts, digital parts. We want all of them to interoperate together. We also would like some of our analog devices to work with other vendors as necessary to create the right types of systems for our customers. So the way to do that is to provide a common hardware abstraction layer. Okay, we're using one in the open community because we're very into open source technology. So we're using the Zephyr environment, the Zephyr community. Which as we that, see here on this Yeah, side. exactly. Yeah. As that abstraction layer, we like it because first of all, it's open. Secondly, because it supports many different types of vendors in the community today, and it provides different levels of, of hardware abstraction layer from higher level transactional to stateless to even register level, so it gives options to our customers how they want to drive their abstraction layer for their specific solution. So these are some of the benefits that we're going with an open source solution to help us drive our interoperability strategy. And what does that open source entail? I mean, how does the customer engage? Yeah, so, so first of all, Zephyr is uh, run by the Linux Foundation. It's, it's open in the sense that if you're, a, well, if you're a member, you can contribute and participate and, and set the strategy, yeah. but really anybody can, can leverage the technology that gets upstreamed into the community. So many vendors do that. Many customers would rather actually pull software from an open community that's been upstream, it's been vetted, it's been tested, it's high quality, and leverage that. With, with Zephyr, the licensing is also very permissive. So that means that there's no restrictions that you have to contribute anything you innovate around it back. You can leverage it and deploy it without necessarily having to do that. So the permissive licensing is another big benefit of leveraging that specific technology. The other thing, Nitin, is uh, we, all, we want to make sure also that even at the board level, the, the evaluation board level, that there's consistency so we can plug and play boards and they can, you know, with different vendors and, and build up a solution and evaluate that without having to wire and solder and do all this other weird stuff. So we're, we're about software driving what even the evaluation board looks like in order to, to drive that interoperability. For that, for that software, you talked about the hardware uh, layer. So what's the analog devices sort of, it's, it's across various, plat uh, various systems and platforms, I guess. It, it is, so we, 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 uh, we do this across, well, RTOS, so Zephyr, we also integrate into Linux, which is another open community. We start with a common device model, so all of our, our low-level drivers are architected around a common template, driver template. That's done to, it's for reuse and scalability across the company. We have a very uh, robust inner source a collaboration strategy. So this allows us to standardize on a common template, drive the hardware or driver model, and then integrate that into these operating systems as necessary. Uh, that's interesting. Uh, so what, what are the things that you know, customers need to know when they're working with this? Yeah, well, when, when customers are working with us, one of the things we want them to know, first of all, is we're, we're, we're really driving the open source communities now. We're much more involved in Zephyr, in Linux, even in some of the uh, open source program office initiatives that are going on. So we're, we're, we're now, by engaging with them, we get the leverage that we need to drive support for all the thousands of products that we have in a much more interoperable way than we did in the past. As we start merging, uh, ADI and all these other technologies that have come in over the last years, this is going to allow us to move a lot faster and to provide the right support for our customers. One of the things I think with doing things in software, for example, I learned about this uh, with the software IOs of a single, single pair Ethernet. Yeah. That's kind of interesting. Is that kind of an extension of what you're doing there? It is. It's, an extent, it's exactly an extension of what we're doing. Uh, it's built upon that same framework that we're providing. And uh, higher up the stack is where we believe we can differentiate a lot more going forward as well. This is an example of differentiating higher up the stack built upon a common, robust uh, enablement strategy. 
Yeah, and I think one of the things I learned about this one is that uh, by doing that, you're reducing the number of SKUs you need when you're going into like building automation or factory automation environments, as long as you can use single-player Ethernet. No, yeah, exactly, and, and the more general way of talking about that is what I refer to as single die multi-market. So, uh, you know, creating a, a fewer die devices and, and using software to go into different markets. I think this also can be a differentiator. People have been talking about the software-defined world. This is one manifestation of it, I guess. It really is. Uh, we, we, aside from providing these common abstraction layers, we're doing more in software to drive the hardware design early on in the process to drive a better programming model. So we were doing that as well. We call it shift left. So we're shifting left our software enablement, both in how we help design the device and how we enable it. So now with first silicon, we have much more software than we have in the past. Well, Rob, thank you very much. Thank you, Nitin. Good, good to see you.